Hello and welcome to this video on how to specify a multi-group confirmatory factor analysis model with strict measurement equivalence in the M plus software. My name is Christian Geiser. On this channel, I present weekly statistics tutorials, usually related to multivariate statistics, such as confirmatory factor analysis, structural equation modeling, multi-level modeling, and latent class analysis. If this is something that is of interest to you, then please subscribe to this channel. Also, don't forget to hit the like button and to check out the description for additional free resources, including a link to my free weekly newsletter. In this video here, I want to show you how you can specify a multi-group confirmatory factor analysis model with strict measurement equivalence in the M plus software. Why is this something that might be useful? With strict measurement equivalence, we have not only the same factor loadings and intercepts across groups in our multi-group analysis, but also the same error variances. First of all, if we can maintain that or if we can establish strict measurement equivalence, then it means that we're saving additional parameters because then the error variances only have to be estimated once and not individually in each group. So we save potentially many parameters that we don't have to estimate, which makes our model more, more parsimonious. More importantly, from a substantive perspective, it could be an interesting question to find out or to examine whether different groups have the same measurement precision. And remember that the error variances that are associated with the observed indicators of the latent factors are reflecting measurement error or unreliability. And so when we can establish equal error variances for uh, the same indicators across groups, then that indicates that those indicators have the same precision of measurement. And that might be interesting, for example, in cross-cultural research, when you want to establish a new scale for measuring or translating a scale to a new culture, and you want to establish that the measurement instrument has the same precision in this culture where you um, came up with a translation and you're trying out whether the measurement instrument works in that culture in the, or in that country with a new language, then this can be an interesting question from a measurement perspective or psychometric perspective to show or find out whether this measurement instrument shows the same precision of measurement in that uh, separate country. So here I'm going to show you how this is done in the M plus software. Of course, you could do this in other programs as well. I find it particularly easy though to uh, specify in the M plus software. So I'm going to walk you through the syntax here and then we're also going to take a look at the output. In this example, I have four variables and two latent factors. So it's a simple two factor model where each factor has two indicators, y1 and y2 are the indicators that are measuring the fa first factor f1 and y3 and y4 are the observed variables that are measuring the factor f2. The variables are continuous or metrical and that's the default in M+. Furthermore, we have a grouping variable here and so this grouping variable could, for example, be a binary variable indicating a control condition versus a treatment condition, or it could be a variable where um, the different values indicate different countries or gender groups or whatever groups you want to compare. So this variable has a special function, so to say. This the grouping variable is used by M plus to conduct the multi-group analysis. Based on that, we split, so to say, the factor model by groups. And so the grouping option is used in M plus to um, alert M plus of the fact that we are willing to run a multi-group analysis as opposed to a single group analysis. And so in this grouping option, you specify which variable is the relevant grouping variable. And then you also provide um, value labels of your choice for the values of this grouping variable here. The first value I labeled control and then the second 
category of the grouping variable I, I labeled as the treatment condition. And this is necessary in M plus so that you can refer to specific groups in your syntax if you want to do that. So for example, if you want to relax certain constraints across groups, then you would have group specific statements, statements where you would say in the model command model treatment or model control to tell M plus what is specific about that group and then also having those labels is useful because the output in M plus is organized by those labels and so that avoids confusion later on when you look at your output then you can always be sure what group you are looking at. You can see that specifying a multi-group model is pretty straightforward in M plus in the model command you specify a factor model as usual as you would for a single group analysis and you don't have to uh, include any specific commands unless there is something that you want specifically relaxed in a given group or specifically constrained in a way sometimes. But here in this case, we only need to specify our basic model and also we need to include a command for the error variances. So the error variances are labeled by or referred to by simply giving the variable names. We can use the hyphen symbol here to refer to all four variables at once. We could have used that hyphen here as well. So M plus is then automatically able to expand the list from uh, Y1 to Y4 so that it knows we're referring to Y1, Y2, Y3, and Y4. And the same with the labels that are given here in parentheses, E1 through E4, those labels make M plus hold the error variances equal across the indicator. So when we simply give the variable names for endogenous or dependent variables, M plus knows we're referring to the residual or error variances. And then if we give a label here in parentheses, then this means um, we want to we want for these error variances to be that we want them to be set equal across the groups. Now this is not a strict invariance model, right? Or it doesn't look like one because we're not saying anything about the factor loadings or intercepts. And the reason we're not doing that is because M plus constrains these by default. So you don't even have to um, set the loadings equal manually or the intercepts because M plus assumes strong measurement equivalence or we also say scalar invariance by default. And so that makes it so easy to specify the strict invariance model because strong invariance is already implied. If you wanted to relax some of the strong invariance constraints, then you'd have to use group specific model statements. So you'd have to say, for example, model treatment and then say which loadings should not be held equal or which intercepts and so on. So, but this makes it easy because typically strong invariance is what we at least aim for anyway. And then adding the constraints here for the error variances makes this a strict measurement equivalence model. Now let's take a look at the output for this model. And I'll point out some relevant uh, issues here. You can see we have 179 in the control condition here and 207 individuals in the treatment condition. The total sample size is 386. And when we scroll down, we can see this model fits the data well. The chi-square test of model fit is non-significant at the 0.05 level. This p-value is greater than 0.05, which is typically the level of alpha that we're testing with. So this model is not rejected at the 0.05 level. You also get the, the chi-square contributions from each group to the overall chi-square value. And you can see the contributions are about the same. And there's overall, there's not significant misfit here. So the model is acceptable. And when we scroll down, we can verify that the loadings, intercepts, and error variances are held equal across groups. So when you compare those from the first group, which is given here, the control group, when you compare those parameter estimates to the parameter estimates in the treatment group, you will find that for example, here you have the exact same loading 0.978 for Y2 as you do in the treatment group. So exact same value and the same for the intercepts. If we check one here, so the first one is 
499 for Y1 and in the treatment group you get the exact same intercept. So as I said previously, M plus by default holds the loadings and intercepts equal across groups. So it automatically establishes strong measurement equivalence. And then what we added was we added the constraints on the residual variances for the Y variables for strict measurement equivalence. And so we can verify that those values are also the same in both groups. So those are the ones in the control group here, 3.154 for Y1. And you can see here you get the exact same value. So that's your strict invariance model. Now, one thing that um, some people are confused about sometimes is that when you go down to the standardized solution and you take a look at the R squared values or reliabilities, then you'll find that those are not the same. So despite the fact that the loadings are equal and the error variances are equal, you can see that the observed variables have different R squared values or different reliabilities. And so that seems to be kind of at odds with the idea of having equal measurement precision with strict invariance. However, it is not an error or not, so say, a contradiction because with strict invariance, although we are constraining the factor loadings and the error variances to be equal across groups, the variances or the model implied variances of the observed variables can still differ. And so that's because the factor variances or true score variances are not constrained to be equal across groups under strict invariance, or at least not per se. So you can see that by looking at the factor variances. So let's take a look at the control group. And so you can see when we go to the unstandardized solution, of course. And so in the unstandardized solution, you can see in the control group, the factor variances are 2.11 and 3.359. And so when we go to the um, treatment group, you can see the variances are different, 5.357 and 3.055. And that's, that's the reason why the reliabilities or R squared values can differ across groups, even though the loadings and the error variances are set equal, because the reliability is lambda squared, the loading squared times the true score variance or factor variance divided by the model implied um, total variance. So lambda squared times true score variance plus error variance in the denominator. And since the true score or factor variance can differ across groups, we will not get the same R squared values under the specification typically. And so how would you get that? So this is something that you could also test. You could test whether you have equal factor variances across groups. And we can do that real quick. So, so then you can see that then the, the reliabilities or R squared values would be the same. So this works according to the same principle. You just simply specify the factor names F1 and F2 and you give labels. Here I'm calling those V for variance, V1, and v2 and so works in the same way as for the error variances for the observed variables this holds the factor variances equal across groups when you put that in your model statement so let's take a look at that as well First of all, we see here that now the model no longer fits well. You can see now the chi-square is statistically significant. Previously, it was not. So that shows us, or that's an indication at least, that the constraint or the assumption that the factor variances are equal across groups is rejected. So even though the error variances, um, that was fine, uh, but the factor variances differ. So there must be a difference at least for one factor in the amount of true inter-individual differences. So one group has a larger variance than the other. And that's actually here that makes sense because one of the measures here is actually a measure of spatial abilities. And it's been shown for that measure in multiple studies that males show, or in this case, or certain groups show a larger variance than others. And so that 
um, makes sense here that we have true variance differences. So this means that model is not really one that we would want to retain because it's significant. It's rejected. Also, the RMSEA looks bad and those, those indices here also don't look super spectacularly good. So that shows pretty clearly that um, equal, the equal variance assumption is not reasonable, at least for one of the factors. But now you have that. So you, now you have the same variances here in the control group as compared to the treatment group here. And this is reflected then in the fact that in the standardized solution, you now also have equal standardized loadings because now all the variances are equal and you get the same R squared values now. You can see here, those are now the exact same as the ones in the other group. And so this would then only under that condition that both the error variances and the factor variances and the loadings are the same across groups, only then would that model imply also equal reliabilities. I hope you found this video useful to learn more about strict factorial or strict measurement equivalence and how this is specified in M plus as well as about the question of equal group reliabilities and when that condition would hold. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel, to hit the like button and to check out the description for additional videos and other resources and I'll see you next time.